Falcon 9 and Dart on NASA's first planetary defense test to intentionally crash into an asteroid. You just heard that call out for supersonic. Going faster than the speed of sound. Visual confirmation. All right. That is real space science. Nothing like the movie Armageddon. But fans of that movie might appreciate what NASA achieved tonight. It used a spacecraft to hit an asteroid. The impact happened just this evening, a little bit before we went on the air, confirmed by real-time video set back from the device. The mission is called DART double asteroid redirection test. Now, this asteroid did not pose a threat to the Earth. Sorry, Michael Bay. But this test could prove useful. Armageddon science fiction. But it does have one idea in common with DART. If an asteroid threatened the Earth, you might not need to destroy it. You could just change its course. Joining us now is Dr. Nancy Chabot. She is the DART coordination lead at the Johns Hopkins University Applied Research Laboratory. Teams there developed and led the DART mission, and she has not stopped smiling for hours. Dr. Chabot, welcome. Congratulations. This is great. I'm glad to have you with us. It is great. Uh, we are, the team is still celebrating here at the Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Lab. It is a moment that we've worked towards for years in order to testing over and over again. Team here uh, developed the spacecraft, built the spacecraft, operated it, and today in spectacular fashion, we had that success of hitting this small asteroid in space that we've never seen before. And you're right, I haven't stopped smiling. I'm probably not stopping anytime soon. We've still got work to do. Well, you go ahead and smile. You go on and smile. And I am, I am fascinated by this project. I love it when people come together to do the hard stuff. And I wonder if you could just give us a sense of how hard this is to do, like to try to fire an asteroid into space that, or fire a spacecraft into space that hits an asteroid, even with the benefit of some autonomous driving, that it was able to do some course correcting. But this is science of the highest order. This had to be tough. It was definitely a tough challenge, um, but really relevant if you want to target an asteroid in the future, if there was one found to be on the course with the Earth. So yeah, I mean, this was a, this was a spacecraft that was going 14,000 miles per hour, targeting an asteroid that's only the size of a sports stadium, and doing this while it was uh, 7 million miles away from the Earth. The autonomous navigation on there wasn't just a nice to have, it was a have to have. You can't do this from just on the earth. You need to develop that technology. And the team here at APL had to develop that technology over years because you know what? We didn't know what this asteroid was going to look like. It could have been all sorts of different shapes and different sizes. And they had to develop and test these algorithms over and over again. And, uh, you know, that team and all the teams that contributed to this, hundreds of people are really just taking a lot of pride, um, to your point people coming together to accomplish something that's so much bigger than any one person can do on their own. It's an amazing moment. It's an important step for humanity to develop this technology. And uh, the team is really happy here at the Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Lab. And I imagine with that autonomous technology, we're talking about something much more complex than a Tesla, right? Because it has to deal with radiation and gravitation and all the things that a spacecraft would encounter on its way through space to try to hit a target as precisely as possible, right? I don't know a lot about Teslas, but for the spacecraft, I will say that there was over 200,000 images that were taken since we launched. Uh, so in the last 10 months, they've been taking images because you really have to understand how that spacecraft drives in space, calibrate every little aspect of it, because you're going to let it have the keys to the spacecraft for the final four hours, which is what we just did. And it's going to autonomously fire those thrusters, correct itself, and you need to have fully characterized exactly what that behavior is like. Also, this was a double asteroid system, right? I mean, there were two asteroids there, and it was only within sort of that last hour that you even saw Dimorphos from Didymos. And so the spacecraft had to be smart enough to identify the difference between Dimorphos and Didymos, not hit Didymos, hit Dimorphos instead, and it performed uh, fabulously in order to do that. Um, and so it really was uh, sort of this futuristic technology that isn't just science fiction anymore, but is a reality. We accomplished this. 
Now talk to me as the cynical taxpayer who wants to know why you fired a spacecraft that you're never going to get back into an asteroid moonlet that is not threatening the Earth. Was this worth it? Did it work? Does it look like the early data turned out the way that you expected? This works spectacularly. And uh, luckily, asteroids that hit the Earth that could cause a lot of damage are very rare. Absolutely. But they are a natural disaster that we could take a few steps to prepare for and prevent. So if something like the size of the asteroid that DART crashed into tonight were to hit the Earth, you would get devastation that went for tens to hundred miles. Imagine if this was over a populated area like a city or even a small state or a small country. This would be completely devastating. So we are taking these first steps now to develop the capability to potentially prevent that happening in the future. Earth has been hit by asteroids for billions of years. It will be again in the future. It's a rare event, but it's exciting that humanity is now going to live in a future where we've taken this first step to potentially prevent this from happening. I got to let you go in just a minute. I know there's a lot of work to do in terms of analyzing the data from here, but I bet there are going to be some kids, some little girls who look at this and they're suddenly inspired to look up and think about space differently. What inspired you? What got you on this journey to the place where you're able to now fire an, a spacecraft into an asteroid? What inspired you to start on this, on this path? Before uh, the short answer is Star Wars. So taking it back to the science fiction theme there, I think anything that makes us dream, maybe some people tuned into this tonight and like me just saw this and experienced the team and the public and the world saw these images together at the same time. And it's such a, a moment that we all shared with everyone. Uh, I think whatever inspires you and gets you to dream. And, you know, for me, it was uh, sort of those Star Wars, seeing worlds that we've never seen before and exploring what that's like. And I used to close my eyes and uh, dream that I could have, uh, have visions like that. And now um, I live in the dream here, uh, helping to do this first planetary defense test mission and uh, just so excited. Dr. Nancy Chabot of Johns Hopkins, I'm so proud of this mission. I'm so impressed by it. I'm grateful that you dreamed big watching Star Wars all those years ago. Look forward to seeing more results from the science and the measurements that are to come. And I appreciate you making time for us tonight. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you so much. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.